brief intro about nectar and uh, during last 8 days you already have uh, known a lot about us uh, in the areas that we work and uh, this is the uh, basic agenda for today so we will be covering the theory session on basics of unmanned aerial vehicle or uh, also called as drone rules for uav flying zones of uh, drone flying followed by basic controls of drone flying and technical aspects of drone flying and then on ground drone flying which will be uh, undertaken by uh, Sri Dharminda ji who is a DGCA licensed pilot for drone and then we'll be covering the drone data processing kind of thing in our labs right so uh, this is about uh, our first speaker today he's uh, Sri Chirag Gupta scientist engineer SD from Northeast Center for Space Application Meghalaya he is B.Tech in Electronics and Communication and currently pursuing PhD from NIT Meghalaya. He is leading UAV Technology Department Operations and Maintenance Team and is a UAV lab in charge at ANISAC. He has more than 8 years of experience in field of UAV systems design, development, operations and his applications in uh, various sectors such as agriculture, forestry, disaster management, town planning, etc. 3D printing technology, capacity building and training. He is also coordinating with Ministry of Civil Aviation and DGC and Bureau of uh, Standards in matters related to UAV regulations and standards. And he has published more than 15 research articles in field of UAV system and applications. Uh, so uh, you can say that he has started the uh, this uh, drone uh, manufacturing division as well as uh, other allied uh, division related to drone itself in uh, North East Center for Space Application Center. And uh, he has done a huge uh, research and development in the field of uh, drone manufacturing. So uh, now I request uh, Sri uh, Nitin Sharma to facilitate our first speaker for today in the traditional Assamese style. Uh, thank you, Nitin Sharma ji. Uh, I also want to uh, thanks uh, thank a lot to Chirag sir, who uh, even after being uh, getting injured, has taken the pain of coming here and to uh, impart the knowledge among the students. As you can already see, he is uh, critically injured. Uh, he is uh, uh, unable to walk properly. So, uh, I request all of you to kindly pay more attention and you can uh, ask any questions related to drone technology to him. He is a very experienced scientist and uh, I thank again uh, to Chirag sir. Uh, now I hand over the mic to Chirag sir to start the proceedings for today and uh, before that I would like to introduce second speaker for today. He is uh, Sri Vipin Singh Negi. He is business development manager from Astaria Aerospace and uh, he is B.Tech in Electronics and Communication and he has uh, done his Masters in Business Administration. He has more than 8 years of experience in the field of drone industry and application areas. So the drone that we will be flying today is manufactured by his uh, organization only. So uh, now I request uh, Dharminder Jhaji to facilitate 
to facilitate uh, Sri uh, Vipin Negi ji in the traditional Assamese style. Thank you very much, uh, Dharmendra ji. Uh, now I hand over the mic to uh, Chirag Gupta, sir, to start the proceedings for today. Thank you all. So uh, thank you Satyam, so a very good morning to all of you. So first of all to be very frank, I am not a teacher and I do not know how to teach. So we make it very informal, you can disturb me in between whenever you want and today I also do not look like a teacher, na? so I am like you only. <laughs> so I will just passing, I will be passing you some of the uh, knowledge in the field of drone technology what I have gathered last 7, 8 years of working experience only. So you can do lot of research on it and there are many career opportunities in this field coming on. It can be a drone pilot, it can be a developed system development or data processing, remote sensing also in a big way it is adopting the drone technology now. So since you are mostly uh, what Geog is the back Geog geography background. So, remote sensing area you will uh, really like it. So, the way you interpret satellite image, you can interpret drone image also. So, I will just uh, go give some brief basic about drone technology, how it evolved and how it is working today. And uh, I will not go much in technical details uh, because considering your background, we will discuss more on application which is more related to your work. So, this uh, presentation broadly categorized into four parts. So, introduction, so here I will uh, briefly tell about the technology, then what are the activities we are doing at NESEC and some of the applications that we have done uh, in past few years and then uh, most important thing about the drone regulations in India. So, how uh, you can adopt in this career, what are the things required. So, if you think about the introduction part, so it is not a very uh, new thing. So, uh, can you tell me first time where, uh, when you have seen drone? You might have seen in some news or some functions or some uh, tourist places. Can you remember when you have seen first time? Bolo, it can be anything yesterday, today, one month before, one year before. Yesterday? <laughs> okay, no problem. That means you are not watching news. It has been in news for last four or five years if you see. That is the, the industry timeline, like last five, six years it has come up uh, very fast in all civil markets. But when we look into the history of this concept, so aerial photography it was uh, first done in somewhere 1870s like that. So it is not you have seen yesterday. So concept is in uh, 70s, people 1870s that time, people were first trying to map aerial uh, images that is for photographic profession. So photographers are very uh, good explorer. So, they used to click photos of city 
then they realize why not we take a top view and look from the top side. So, initially they put a camera on some bird or some kites and try to map, I think that experiment was done in Paris city somewhere. So, they tried to put it on a bird and flew, let it flew over and all those areas we got the good pictures. So, that is where first time aerial photography was used, but the concept of drone came later uh, like people thought say bird is moving you do not have control where it will go, wherever it goes you will get pictures. So, people thought of making a machine which can go like a word and it is in your control where you want to send, which area you want to see. So, for that purpose these are some of the primary designs of uh, copters what you have seen yesterday. So, in 1920 and 23 this omi chain and bolts these are the very basic design. So, even today also if you see a quadcopter it looks very much like this only. So, after that experiment and these things uh, drone technology is still it was not very much evolved for common men. So, initially it was developed for world war 1 and 2 during that time. So, you have seen many rockets were developed during world wars for fighting purpose. So, drones also even uh, whatever you are seeing today, but military drones you are aware quite long. You have seen army drones in the news, it is maybe last 5, 10 years, 15 years before also if you see any news you will find some ex, uh, this details of military drones. So, military, uh, military drones were the premier <laughs> application uh, beginning of this technology. So, people used it for bombing to other cities or doing some spy surveillance or some fighting thing, fighter drones also available. So, these were the things which were uh, initially done and up to World War II it was very much used in uh, fighting and all. But after 1960s or 70s when even this satellite technology evolved and people start taking images from space, that time it was thought that we can take image from some intermediate place also because you know satellite image this resolution and all is a constraint. So, uh, aerial photography evolved, people took uh, images through aeroplanes and through helicopters and after that this drone thing has come up. So, in our country maybe last uh, I would say 10 years you can consider the work is going on in very advanced stage and nowadays you have some make in India drones also thanks to the Bipinji's team and some more companies. So, and uh, it is still a very beginning I see next 10 years we will be having many more drones and many more new applications. So, this was about the brief history, but uh, history is a past still. So, future is yet to come, we are yet to realize potential of drone technology. So, next decade or 10, 15 years you will see there is a huge demand of drone and drone images also. So, set like you interpret satellite image, you can do all things with drone image with a very, very high resolution compared to satellite image. So, then uh, first thing comes uh, like we know uh, about the drone things, then what are the types and how it is working. So, these are the three broad categories we see. So, Okay. So, first left image top side you are seeing fixed wing UAV. So, this is one kind of UAV, right side is the copter type which you have seen yesterday and bottom is the hybrid kind of. So, first you see fixed wing UAV, it is very much similar to your aircraft like commercial planes you travel through the flight and all and it requires some kind of runway also and very high uh, fly, flying skills and very agile aircraft it is. And second one you see copter type it is very easy to use. You will see today also how it flies, it can take off from same place and it land on that area. And then you can roam around control it through a radio control and it is very easy to fly maybe within 
a month or two months time you can master this flying if you fly with whole heart. So, third one is a hybrid combination. So, why hybrid is required I will tell you. So, fixed wing has some advantage. So, it can fly for very long durations may be 2 hours, 3 hours. You can cover 20, 30 kilometers of area in single go and you can carry a very heavy things also 5 kg, 10 kg, 20 kg payload for dropping off some medicines or food package, package during a flood and all. But the only limitation with fixed wing is it requires a runway I told you it has to run uh, like fly on a runway and then take off and then it cannot stay uh, remain stationary at one point. So, any your flight you see even if uh, sometimes you feel airport is not free that pilot used to keep circling over the airport until he gets the landing clearance because he cannot remain stationary. So, this is another uh, limitation compared to copter you will say. Yeah. So, second category is copter type which looks very much like this. So, major advantage of this copters are they uh, like if it is placed here immediately from this point it can take off. So, you do not require a big ground or big runway to take off and land. Second important thing is you can keep it in your backpack and move around. So, it is very these are very lightweight and very portable. So, if you want to survey some remote places where your car cannot go, you can walk down with this and then further it into more uh, deep forest or uh, these hill areas. So, this has a very good advantage in hill areas. What the problem with this copter is they require lot of power. So, you will see these four motors are running. So, all the battery you put more than half is gone uh, with this and you get hardly 20 to 30 minutes flight time. So, in some applications 20 minute is not sufficient. Suppose I want, uh, suppose I tell you to map entire Guwahati city, it will take lot of time with this copter. But if I tell you to map a small village which is placed on some downside of the hill where you cannot reach easily, you can simply fly from top and get the overview of that. So, based on the requirement you can fly any of the things. So, third one what you are seeing in the bottom that is a hybrid model. So, uh, combination of both fixed wing and copter. So, here you see it can fly like a fixed wing, but take off and landing it can do like a copter. So, this is very much uh, useful in our applications like our hill states. So, you can take off from any place and you can cover big areas 4 5 square kilometer in a go you can cover. So, these are some advantage and disadvantage. So, if you have any clarification on this otherwise we will move. So, let us see some basic components. So, I will not go in detail, but we will just tell you what are the things at least. So, if you see this copter, what will be there inside the model? So, this is one aircraft which we assembled uh, for any sec. So, I just taken some pictures during assembly. So, this you can see is a uh, frame, we say frame or the main body. So, based on the arms we classify as a hexcopter, quadcopter or tricopter. So, this aircraft is what it is there in the table you can see here yeah, yeah, this side. Ye log kya Hindi mein comfortable hai kya? Hindi mein comfortable ho or English mein? Ok, we will do mix. Ye aircraft dekhe this is a quadcopter or hexcopter or tricopter what you think? Why? Now you tell it is a hex or quad or tricopter. Yeah. 
see you can count na 1, 2, 3, 4. X means what? Made of? 4 is quad. X is 6. So, the one you are seeing in the image that is X. You see how many arms are there? 6 arms are there. Na? So, this is a basic structure. So, all these arms and all actually whatever you fly, you have to minimize the weight. So, if weight is less, you can fly for long time. That is a very common understanding. If something is lighter, it can fly nicely. If something is very heavy, you, you find it difficult to fly. Huh? This is quad. Quad, quad, quad. Yeah. Q U A D. Hmm. Yeah. So, this is a hexcopter. So, I was telling you about the quality uh, light, uh, like how lightweight it can be. So, it depends on the what material you are making. So, suppose if this frame you make it with iron or you make it with aluminum or you make it with wood, which one will be lighter? Huh? Aluminum, correct. So, we need to select material so that it is very lightweight plus it has to have a high strength also. So, are you aware of any material which is lightweight and um, same time has good strength also? Okay, maybe you have not heard. So, it is called as carbon fiber material. So, these arms whatever you are seeing or most of the copters you see these are made of carbon fiber materials. So, this material this is one material which is very much used in aerospace industry. So, it is not only thrown for aeroplanes for rockets everywhere it is used. So, it is very lightweight and gives very high strength. So, center point you are seeing a round plate. So, that uh, round plate is a metal plate which we use for making connections. So, this is the main structure or the main body which is holding everything and it will fly together. And one more important thing you can see uh, this frame is a symmetric. It is, it is following a symmetry even the copter keep here this one also symmetric structure. So, any idea why it is symmetric? You know symmetry? You know symmetry? If you draw a center line, both sides are equally same. It looks from any side, any arms you hold, it will look similar or any side can be front side like that it is looking x for this thing. So, symmetry actually it, it is a geometry of the aircraft. So, based on geometry also you can make many models. So, we follow symmetry so that it is stable in the air symmetric configuration. So, uh, you can see this side everybody. See this bottle is kept here. You want to keep it in air or you want to lift it up. So, which force you are countering? Which force you are balancing? Bolo, bolo. Yeah, bolo. Bolo, bolo. Bolo. Jogi bolo. Man mein For balancing the bottle, you have to use your hand. No, hands is okay, but which force? Ah, you say it loudly. 
no problem gravity correct so see everything on this earth faces a gravitational force so even we standing or sitting also we are uh, working against some gravity so suppose i want to lift this bottle up i have to balance the gravity force or by hand i have to pull it so that i am applying equal and opposite force to this gravity force and then there is one more thing called uh, center of gravity for every body so center of gravity will be at the center of this structure okay so if i hold it from center it can be balanced if i hold it from here it cannot remain straight na so that is why symmetry is important so for any symmetric object center of gravity lies in the center of body of that object so suppose this is a round thing round plate so if you put uh, hold it in the center center tip so center of body is the center of this circle and center of gravity is the point on which the body is balanced or force is balanced so maybe i am going little bit to your 10th or 12th subjects physics common physics in 2012 you have studied center of body and all okay so it has nothing to do much i am just uh, trying to explain so that is why we go for symmetric objects because you can handle center of gravity easily so one part is the aircraft so that was the body next thing is how it is flying what how it is generating force upward force you told na so in suppose here i am holding it through hand so my hand is giving the upward force so like that on aircraft who is giving the upward force so if you see here so this is a motor and on top of this one propeller will come you will see later and inside for this motors we have one electronic speed controller so this entire assembly is used for giving the upward thrust to your aircraft so uh, now can you switch to the ppt ppt so this is what i, I have shown here one motor this is a propeller set and down is the esc so when this propeller uh, is combined with the motor and esc and it is rotating so it generates upward force due to the pressure difference between top and bottom so that upward force when it is equal to the gravitational force your drone will start flying so this huh? esc is electronic speed controller yeah so these are the propellers see so when you fit it into your motor and this this will spin like this very fast spin it will give and because of the difference of pressure you see the geometry of this thing so because of the difference of pressure it will start lifting upward it will give up upside thrust so that is this is the basic assembly required for providing thrust so whoever is designing the drone they used to select proper uh, air motor and proper uh, this combination so all data sheets are there i am not going into uh, detail so just to tell you what are the parts next thing is battery so you know it requires some kind of power so how to power so like your mobile phones and all this also have got a battery mostly lithium polymer battery so uh, this again chemical composition you don't have to know you can simply see this is one of the mostly used uh, batteries in drones because of their form factor and the kind of flight time they give in the given weight and this is a charger so these battery can be four cell six cell or if you read in mah 10000 mah 5000 like your mobile phone have 2000 mah na similarly this is a 10000 mah battery there are some alternate source of power also sometimes you can put a, a small generator and it can be a petroleum based also so uh, those things you need not to worry because mostly whatever model you will work it is mostly battery powered 
Yes, so these are the batteries you can see for this aircraft and this is a charger. So, next important thing is the remote control and flight controller. So, flight controller is a kind of a small micro computer which is put on top of drone. So, whatever commands you are giving from ground it is processed in the flight controller. So, you can say flight controller as a brain of entire system. See this body motors and all they are all mechanical things they do not understand our communication or how you want to control them. So, left side you see it is a remote control. So, how you have seen many things like this is a remote control. So, it is a simple joystick you, you use for video game playing and all. Only thing is in our case it is a radio control like you do not need a wire, wire connection to the drone, it is a wireless connection. So, it is a ground station and remote control for your drone. So, using this you control all the movements left, right, forward, backward, go up, go down and uh, this ground control station will help you in receiving the live data or live video feed or you can do some autonomous mission planning using this. So, you can upload your flight, uh, KML you are all aware, KML file you have seen. So, it is a like map on which you draw some boundary and you save it as KML on Google Earth. So, that exactly the KML file can be uploaded to your drone and it will go and follow that area to capture the images. So, all these things you can do called as mission planning using this. So, again uh, remote controller and uh, we have some technical things with this what frequency to use some license and delicensing bands. So, those things uh, again I am skipping for now and this flight controllers also there are many types. So, this is one type uh, Naja V2 it is for quad, uh, like copter types. The most widely used and advanced controller is PICSOC it is a open source and you use it and it, it has got many options, you can do many, many things with that. So, these things you will come across if you sometime happen to be in a team for developing or assembling a drone. Unless you are using it, you do not need to know in detail, but at least components you have to know, which component is for what function. So, inside details you need not to worry if you are just using the platform for your applications. And then payloads. So, payload is nothing but uh, whatever goes on top of drone. So, payload can be of different categories. So, this whatever you are seeing on the screen, these are mostly used for remote sensing purpose. So, you can see one RGB camera is there, one hyperspectral sensor, micro, uh, multispectral sensor, lidar sensor. So, whatever kind of data you get for satellite image, you can say, emulate for drone platform also. Only thing is the range uh, like uh, quality of the data and resolution of the data will be uh, different compared to the satellite uh, yeah, data. So, these are for remote sensing. Now, you tell me for disaster management what could be the payload in case of disaster applications. First, you understand what is payload? Payload kya hai? Pata laga? See, aap log, you are flying drone, but what purpose? There must be some purpose, you cannot simply fly like that. So, purpose can be videography or photography or some thermal images. So, whatever camera you attach, it is called as payload. 
for capturing the photos or videos. So, now you tell me in case of disaster what could be the payload. Suppose, you have to flood area mein jana hai, to drone mein kya laga ke jaye, kya payload chahiye? Ya disaster mein kuch relief rescue operation karna hai, to kya payload hoga? Bolo thoda out of bahar socho thoda you think little broad don't stuck in camera only camera camera ke bahar niklo is camera hi thodi laga sakte hain payload can be anything that goes up with the hmm. drone de asal mein kya relief mein kya karte hain jo log bahar mein dube hain kya karte hain unke liye government kya karti hai so food packet can be your payload dekhiye jab jab tak hum remote sensing mein dekh rahe hain tab tak aapko camera chahiye bas kyunki aapko image lena hai lekin application are so broad you can just think of there can be thousand number of applications so, when you call for disaster, you need to help people. How? You need to supply medicines, you need to supply food packets, you need to supply life jackets. So, all those are payload for disaster application. Even camera also, you need to do surveillance of flood affected area. Kitna dur tak baal hai, kitna log fasa hai, kaha fasa hai. Aap thermal camera laga sakta hai, kabhi night time mein bhi surveillance kar sakta hai. कहाँ पे कौन फंसा हुआ है वो देखने के लिए और रिलीफ मटेरियल ड्रॉप कर सकता है सो दैट इज व्हाट आई एम टेलिंग फॉर पेलोड थिंग सी सो दीज आर काइंड ऑफ फायर वो एक्सटिंग्विशिंग बॉल्स सो इफ इट इज ए स्मॉल फायर यू कैन ड्रॉप दिस बॉल एंड इट विल एक्सटिंग्विश देन टॉप साइड यू सी ए मेडिकल बॉक्स medicine box so this is a medical delivery payload left side bottom image you see some spray is coming out so this is again during agricultural disaster or you not disaster you can uh, spray some pesticides and all which are hazardous for human health so suppose whenever you are spraying in a field and if the crop height is more than the person is spraying height so suppose you have seen sugar cane fields. So, those sugar canes are very high or you go any orchid uh, these things uh, gardens. So, those trees are very high. You cannot spray them from bottom or even if you spray that chemical falls on you also when spraying. So, for all those purpose you can develop a spraying drone or it is available also nowadays and you can send, set it to any height and it can simply spray and come back. You need not to be go uh, near to the chemicals and all. So, this is another good application you will see. Okay, so enough to the introduction part. So, now I think you all know what is drone. In a very basic term at least, how it looks like, what are the different categories. Next, we will see some of the general applications, mostly in the civil domain or in the common man's point of view. So, I will not be touching any military application because we are not uh, working on that or you will not be needing on that. So, now first application you see land surveying. So, this is very much similar to your satellite things. So, only difference is if you see satellite in one pass you will get some 250 500 kilometer areas coverage you will get but your resolution will be very poor 5 meter 10 meter or nowadays some is lesser resolution also came but when you compare it with drone data in one flight you can hardly cover 200 hectare or even less but the kind of resolution you see here 
this, uh, this top left image, it is very high resolution. If you zoom into this, you can count number of houses or number of solar panels on top of a roof. So, it goes in terms of centimeters, 2, 3, 5 centimeter kind of data you can get. So, whereas satellite data you will get in meters resolution and then you can do all kind of GIS studies on that. So, next uh, domain of application will be in your agriculture fields. So, you can do some uh, disease monitoring, and do chemical spraying application, then you can do land management. So, drainage issues are there or some yield estimation you have to do. So, this uh, disease and, uh, and one more important application in agriculture nowadays coming for insurance, crop insurance things. So, earlier there were many dispute uh, related to crop insurance. So, farmer is claiming something and insurance companies they do not agree with that. So, now with the help of drone images you can delineate affected area and you can perfectly tell like this uh, 200 hectare is affected. So, that much insurance he will get. So, this is one of the most important application it is uh, going on maybe sometime you will also be linked to this somewhere. Next you see environmental studies. So, you can capture images for deep forest, even forest fires also people trying to monitor even though it is spread very fast and then you can monitor river bank and bank erosions. So, this is also a very important step if you want to uh, do the uh, flood management. So, you have to check all the embankment before and after monsoon. So, you cannot wait for satellite data because it comes in uh, some time, it takes some time to come. So, that time you can do drone surveying, then you can use it in wildlife. So, animal counting or animal monitoring actually. So, for that purpose also it is Maybe uh, you have heard in Kaziranga drones were used sometimes in our Kaziranga National Park. So, drones were used to monitor and see the movements of the animals or to do the survey line surveillance of the park. So, no intruder is going into or these animals are not coming out. So, this is one application in the field of wildlife. Next you see uh, some applications related to civil engineering. So, infrastructure inspection. So, you can use it for inspection of bridges, cell phone towers, power lines, solar panels. So, whenever we are setting up huge solar panels, so it is very difficult to monitor is manually. You cannot go and monitor individual cell. So, you can simply fly a drone may be fitted with a thermal camera and you can detect the faulty cells. So, even solar plane panels and wind turbines, uh, transmission line monitoring, so all these things you can do using drone. Second part is feasibility survey. So, that is for route monitor, route alignment. So, you want to construct a highway or a railway line on a hill or any place. So, first thing is you can do a drone survey, you can do some contour mapping. So, it is used, uh, it is, uh, these are some things which is required before any construction of uh, lines and roads. So, alignment also you can bring out using drone images, which way your road should be aligned to avoid some destructions. Third uh, thing is in the field of mining. So, you can do volume calculation of the mine, open mine uh, materials. So, in case of sand mine, suppose sand mining they used to put it on top of the earth the entire volume. You can uh, do some 3D mapping and calculate this much volume is extracted. So, whatever is looking, whatever is put on the surface, whatever you can see from top. So, you, you cannot see inside a coal mine until you go inside from top. So, these are some 
applications related to mining. Then of course, the disaster management we have been talking. So, relief and rescue, you can identify people who are stuck up in the disaster and they can uh, come and you can just uh, send the people to rescue them. You can throw the uh, these uh, swimming tubes or some life jackets in case of flood. Then fire fighting in case of building fire also where height is very much say 40, 50 story building where a normal fire fighting vehicle could not reach. That place also drone can be sent and uh, fire can be put off, then fire extinguishing balls. Then surveillance and monitoring. So, in recent silter floods also we did it here and Dima Asa also we our team has gone for this kind of work. So, surveillance and monitoring or quick disaster assessment what has happened. So, in Dima Asa suppose uh, Immediately after disaster, I think two, three days our people went. Then this uh, DC she told to see the inside places, some villages and all where people's homes uh, has been destructed to immediately uh, give, bring them to shelter homes or to give them some compensation or to give them some life support materials. So, for those purposes, it is being used uh, very readily in disaster threat areas. Then medical services, so delivery of medicines, blood packets. So, even blood packet nowadays it comes in a frozen container. So, it is very lightweight, I heard 3 to 4 kgs. So, you can simply put it on a drone and send it in case of cru uh, crucial blood requirement in uh, remote places. Next is the organ transportation. This is another very important area. So, to transport a organ you need a some 20 to 25 kg kind of payload capacity. So, big drones are being used for organ transportation also to avoid the road rush and all. And the next concept is a ambulance drone where it is used for taking a person itself. So, these things very soon you will ambulance drone and all very soon you will see in market maybe next 2, 3 years. Systems are already there, people are demonstrating it. Uh, very soon you will see this in hospitals. So, even I heard this uh, AIMS Guwahati like uh, this Changsari area when AIMS is coming up na AIMS hospital. So, there you will be having a helipad and then maybe a drone pad also to take people from one place to other place. So, these were the broad applications what can be done using drones. So, this is not limited to that you will have many more applications. So, along with every system there comes some limitation also. So, these are the few limitations you can see. Uh, one is the limited payload capacity. So, whatever we say is still 10 kg, 20 kg, 50 kg, there is some kind of upper cap. You cannot uh, pull a truck on a drone. So, that payload limitation is there. Then limited flight endurance, so 20 minutes in case of copter up to 50, 60 minutes or in case of fixed wing, it can go up to 2, 3 hours also. Are you aware of any uh, experiment where you have seen more flight on uh, flight time also there was a solar plane which was made and flown across the entire earth periphery all the continents so it it was totally flying on the solar power and it continuously it can fly for many days together. So, in India it is stopped two places. Uh, no, in India it is stopped in Ahmedabad or somewhere. So, even though flight endurance is limited, but there are experiments where going on where people try to use solar energy to increase the flight time. So, it will get charged during the flight itself and that flight uh, charging can be used for further flying. Then less area coverage, 
So, already I told compared to satellite you will get very less area coverage in one flight and relatively costly uh, costly means w uh, first time when you do or first time when you do setup then it is costly, but later on it uh, your cost part will come down once you start operating. Then it is suitable for small study areas and most important thing is the still is the weather constraint. So, during rain or foggy weather it is still not that useful and some airspace regulations are always there for every country. So, those regulations depends on country to country, India has also come up with some new regulations last year. So, everywhere, everybody dealing with this kind of systems you need to follow those regulations, especially for pilot and organizations which, we, which are flying drones, not for the application people. So, you are getting drone image, you can do whatever application you want but somebody is flying or some office is buying a drone for flying and all you need to follow certain norms. Yeah. No, it is a very uh, good concern what I would say. So, rain is still a limitation, but see uh, mostly you will not feel continuous rain. So, even if it is raining for a week, some 2-3 hours in the day you will get uh, when rain is stopped or if it is a light drizzle also you can fly. So, we need to tap that window. So, even No, till now there is no uh, practically working drone which is being used in drone rain, but of course you, there are certain components which can be rain proof, but that rain proofing is for the uh, not for flying in rain, but suppose you are flying and suddenly rain comes you can bring it back, so it will not be damaged. So, I do not know maybe in future it can come up. But till now, though, there is no. Only thing is, we need to catch that rain free window. Release? Yeah, no, you need to maintain sufficient distance, it need not to go close, na. You, uh, suppose you want to put off the fire, you are dropping some balls, so you can be some 10 meter above, it is safe or you can uh, this water pipe if you are carrying, it can spray from certain distance. Huh? Yeah, we need to maintain certain distance because your electronics will get heat up. So, everything. Uh, inside the building also it is possible, but uh, what I will say one major important component required for drone operation in the GPS or any navigation system to make it move accordingly. So, inside building you will not find any GPS signal first of all. So, all these general purpose drone you cannot use it for inside building, but still it is possible without using GPS uh, they use some alternative navigation mechanism to move it inside a building. So, that inside building operations are possible, but not with the common drones you need to have a specialized drone for that indoor mapping kind of. Yeah, good, good observation. Any? Hmm. 
No, in that case it will operate automatically one thing and second thing is even if it is your uh, outside of your eyes, there will be a small uh, camera put on top. So, you can see through that camera in your remote. So, that camera will be giving you live feed inside corridors. So, you can see it is going which side and this. Huh? No, you can connect display to any remote. Most of the drones they are having display. Hmm. Most of the drones. Where? Hmm. That is in outdoor flying you are telling. So, outdoor flying what happened sometimes? That is why one important regulation a part of DGCA regulation we will discuss later is line of sight flying. So, line or visual line of sight flying means it is it should be visible to you, because when it goes beyond that suppose you are flying from here and you go to your uh, right side say 10 kilometers, you, our eyes cannot see hardly 500, 700 meters you can see. And after that, suddenly some mountain has come up or a small hillock is there or a building is there, you are not able to see. And if your drone do not have any collision avoidance sensor, it will go and hit there. That is how accidents is happening and that is why uh, they have put restrictions for visual line of sight. So, if it is visible, you can see oh, it is about to hit the building, you can bring it back or take the sights. So, that is why line of sight is important, but there are two kind of line of sight. So, one is the radio line of sight. So, uh, when we say the operation in line of sight, technically it means line of sight between your remote control and your drone. So, if your drone and remote control maintains line of sight, it will keep on operating even if you are able to see or not. So, that distance will be much more what you are able to see from your eyes. So, suppose even if uh, you send it up to 2, 3 kilometers, it will respond to your command. So, that is line of sight with respect to your radio control. But when we say visual, uh, visual line of sight means it should be visible from your eyes also. So, then your range is restricted. So, two things are there. So, yeah, it is good thing. Anything? Anything you want to know? Is there anything you want to know or we can move further? So, this was all about the UAV technology and applications in general and some limitations. Next, you will see some of the uh, systems and applications we are doing at our office. So, our activities are broadly in four domains. So, one is the system development. So, we have done lot of assembling and development of systems based on the specialized need at our office. Second component you can see about data processing. So, data processing also very important and very skilled uh, work in the domain of UAV activities. So, uh, we do like lot of data processing and many softwares are there and we have a big team for that. Then third part is UAV services. So, we are providing services to all user departments of NER and even outside northeast also we have gone for many support work. And fourth is the technical support to other department. So, under different projects we have uh, developed drones and given to other people also and we continue to provide support to them, all kind of technology things. 
So, these are the four, uh, four main areas and some capacity building activities also we used to do. So, a dedicated two weeks uh, tech, uh, training program we are running every year. So, these are some of the systems we have which are in used for uh, common surveys. So, you can see a quadcopter, hexcopter, uh, the top right is the assembled one what I have shown you before. And then this one is a hybrid one, hybrid model. It can take off like a copter and fly like a wing. So, this is again very much helpful in our hilly terrain kind of things for covering large areas. Then these are some sensors we have, thermal sensor, normal RGB camera, zoom camera and then multispectral also I was telling you. So, it is mostly used for a field uh, this agriculture field mapping or crop monitoring, stress monitoring in the crop and crop health monitoring and then a hyperspectral also it is there. So, multispectral and all you are aware have you seen any satellite data in multispectral bands? So, how many bands you have seen? Okay. So, similar to the satellite data, we have uh, this multispectral sensor also. So, sentinel you might be aware. So, whatever bands available in sentinel are available with this uh, top left uh, 5 band and 10 band combination. So, same bands are available with a different resolution. So, this one is very high resolution, sentinel is low resolution. And then we also have a 3D printing setup. So, 3D printing have you seen anywhere, any colleges you have seen? So, nowadays many college also came up with this, this is again a new technology and it is being used in automobile industry and aerospace industry, very largely it has started to being used. So, uh, maybe one small brief I can give you what is a 3D printer. So, it is nothing but like how you have 2D printers. So, you uh, give uh, you give some PDF file, it will print that or you give a word file or photo something, it prints in 2D. So, this printer again in, in place of giving a word file or th this thing, you are giving a 3D printable file and it prints the 3D objects, maybe this bottle can be printed or this glass or some memento you can print or a pen stand you can print, even uh, artificial jewelries are being printed using this, some medical support systems are being printed, some uh, this artificial jaw line or some prosthetic legs, all those things are being printed using 3D printer. So, it is totally a different domain, I am not uh, going into details now, if you want to know, maybe you can contact me later, it is a total sep uh, separate subject, but why we are having it or why we are using it for our drone related applications. So, even we have printed a small drone also, you can see on bottom, this drone entirely printed with the printer and then you can print some spare parts also, propellers or your drone suppose one arm is broken, you can repair it using this. So, these are some of the items which we have printed, see sensor mounts, then seeding mechanism, you can put any kind of seed and it will drop propeller balancer one uh, propeller itself. So, many things can be printed in 3D format using this. So, this 3D printer can be of many types wood based, so, you can put uh, using wood material or it is also metal based, you can print using aluminum metal or iron or some other metal. It can be polymer based, so ours is a polymer based. 
these are all lightweight high strength material which is used for uh, flying things. And then uh, some collaborations what we are doing with other departments, so we have provided them system and all and set up help in set up for entire uh, lab. And we have also working MOUs with many premier institutes like IIC Bangalore, IIT, Anna University and all for different development works and applications. And these are some of the training programs also we are running at NESEC. So, it is a regular two weeks training we used to conduct since 2016, but last two three years due to COVID it cannot go, but this year again it is planned in September I guess. So, those training programs we are conducting for awareness and uh, uh, imparting knowledge on data processing and applications and all. Yeah. So, these are some glimpse of our lab what uh, we are working there and next part we will see some of the applications. So, till now you have seen what are the systems available at our uh, lab. So, these are some of the major applications we have done in last 5-6 years using drone in this area. So, first one you can see large scale land use mapping. So, land use land cover you all might have uh, worked on on satellite image. So, it is very much similar to that this is the Nongpo town area image. So, you can see the kind of resolution even uh, these these solar panels and all are visible even cars also you can see on ground. So, after doing uh, suppose you capture thousand of images and you do some data processing and generate one single image. On top of that you can do all this analysis. So, how much area is covered? So, total 727 plus land use classes are there. You can see the drainage pattern of the city or town, you can see the building structures or water locked areas or traffic areas. So, all these things are possible using uh, surveying of uh, land survey. And then uh, yeah, in surveying one very important application going on national level, if you have you are aware of any national level application or a scheme where drone surveying is going on. See uh, there is one Swamitu Yojana, it was launched by our prime minister two years back under which survey of India is the nodal agency and they are mapping entire country using drone primarily into the village areas which for which we do not have any maps and then they are generating some property cards. So, till now you know for land and all we do not have a proper document. If you go for a loan or if you want to sell or buy a land you have to run around many offices. So, now they are generating digital property cards. So, in every village some land identification is done, chuna marking is done. So, this is my plot, this is your plot, this is his plot. So, after chuna marking they are uh, flying the drone and making a map like this and then each plot is given a identity number. So, suppose plot number 1, if you click it will give all details belongs to whom, what area, when purchase, when sell plot number 2 belongs to him, his all details. So, like that all maps they are digitizing and, and all GIS information is put in place and they, they are generating property cards. So, some states it is already started and Assam, Meghalaya also it is going to start soon. So, these are some very good initiatives which can be done using uh, land mapping and all. So, next is the estimation of earthwork for extension of Shillong airport. So, there, there were some plans to extend the runway area of airport and some hillocks are coming in between. 
So, for uh, they need a, for proper takeoff and landing of flight, they need to cut some hillocks and fill some areas. So, that analysis we done using a uh, drone. Next is this embankment breach location and monitoring. I think it is for uh, Ranganadi river and Puthimari river somewhere Rangia kind side. So, you can map all the embankments. So, cross section profile is given, 3D view is there. So, before flood and after flood situation. Before flood, you can map embankment and see where it is broken, where it need to be uh, rectified. So, those activities can be taken up. Next is the volume estimation. So, this was in uh, Jammu. So, earlier J and K, we went to this uh, Jammu area, some illegal uh, cutting of trees was going on. So, we can and it was dumped into some open areas. So, we can fly drone and tell them approximately how much volume is dumped. So, based on that, the uh, state police took action and they did some work. So, this is one application which is possible. Next is community reserve forest boundary mapping. So, if you are aware in Meghalaya, there are in Meghalaya, there are many forest areas which do not have any boundary community forest. So, people do not know which forest like uh, for community A, this forest belongs to community A, but where is the boundary people do not know. So, for that purpose also we are using drones for Meghalaya forest department and we map many forest and then their pe forest people will come and village people will come and they jointly tell this is our boundary, this is our boundary. We used to mark it on the map. So, now uh, proper boundary is identified. So, these are all day to day life applications you can see and you can even imagine many more applications. Then crop damage assessment I was telling you. So, it can be used for fasal vima yojana also. So, this happened uh, somewhere in Morigaon district we went. So, you can see some live photos from the field on bottom side two photos are there. So, affected field it looks like this. So, some crop uh, plant brown hopper was the insect they used to come in herd and eat away entire crop. So, this kind of thing you can map and you can delineate how much is the severely affected area, how much is the partially affected area, how many fields are affected. So, all this GIS analysis you can do on top of that map. Next is the route alignment what I told you. So, this is somewhere uh, Nagaland Manipur border area. Yeah, Manipur Nagaland border area, uh, this is for border road organization, they used to construct roads. So, they are planning to construct a road which will reduce the connecting distance between some places. So, for that we have done drone flying and we have done some analysis of route, how the route should follow. So, this was the third part of the presentation we have covered some of the applications. So, I hope you might be interested in many of the applications going further and you can think of many more. So, next is the very important uh, area covering to this technology is DGCA regulations for UAVs in India. So, what is DGCA? What organization you have uh, heard of any time? DGCA stands for Director General of Civil Aviation. It falls under the Ministry of uh, Civil Aviation, Government of India. 
So, this DGCA is the prime authority to regulate all airspace related activities for civilian purpose. So, Indian Air Force and military applications do not fall under DGCA. So, DGCA is taking care of all civilian aircrafts manned or unmanned. So, whatever flights or whatever airports you are seeing all regulatory framework is done through DGCA thing. So, DGCA has come up for regulations with respect to drones in India in 2021, August 2021 that is last year. So, what are these regulations? Suppose you are aware of motor vehicle act. So, when you are driving there are certain rules you know for car parking or no parking areas, where to park and then you need some driving license for car, then you need some fitness certificate or pollution certificate, many documents are required if you are a vehicle owner. So, similar way for drones also they have come up with some regulations. So, you need a pilot license, you need a drone to be in good condition. So, all those environment clearances are required. Then which area to fly that also they regulate so that you do not hit into any passenger aircraft. So, usually passenger aircraft they fly very high 10,000 feet like that, that is around 3 kilometers from ground. So, all drones what we are flying hardly few meters, so 120 or maximum 500 meters. But problem occurs whenever you are flying near a airport, because even though in normal time it is flying 10,000 feet, but while landing on the airport and taking off from airport, it has to reduce the height. So, that time there are high probability you can interfere with the manned aircraft. And security is the topmost priority for manned aircraft, because in one flight say 400, 500 people are sitting, if something happens all gone in one shot. There is no scope of going to hospital also, many of the air, uh, this airplane accidents. So, to avoid that they have come up with certain guidelines. So, we will just see a few, but I will not go in very details. So, there is a very good detailed document is available on internet. If you are interested, you can look into that. It was published in Gazette of India last year, Drone Rules 2021. You can simply type on Google Drone Rules 2021, you will get that document. So, these are the certain sections of that document. So, it was initially launched, uh, it was initially published in 12th March 2021 and uh, it was revised on 25th August 2021. So, that is the last revised document. So, I have not changed that revision here. So, it mostly deals with end to end everything. So, sorry, it deals with classification of drones, then it deals with provisions for authorization to import, manufacture, trade, own and operate, who can import, what are or who are the people who can manufacture or who are the people who can do business in drone. So, everybody is not allowed to do, you need to follow certain guideline, you need to have certain licenses. So, all those provisions are detailed in this document. Then how do you identify your drone and how do you transfer it? Suppose you sell your car, you need to do transfer work, you need to go to DTO office and you do some paperwork, then the owner is changed and it is transferred from one person to other person. Similarly, provisions are there for drones also. So, I have a drone, I want to sell it to you, I can transfer it legally and you will be the owner of that. So, for that what are the forms required, what are the formalities required, everything is listed. Then operations of unmanned aircraft system. So, what are the areas where you can fly, what height you should fly, what conditions you should fly like visual line of sight or beyond visual line of sight, all those things are mentioned in part uh, 8 or 7 of this 6. 
then like we have airports, so there may be some drone ports in future you will see. But for drone ports, you need not require a big areas like airport, a small field or some places when drone taxi starts, you will see a drone port kind of thing on top of a mall also. So, on the roof of a mall, they will make some a small helipad or drone port. You can simply go to the top, uh, take that drone taxi, it will take you to the another place on top of some building and you can get down. Then there is a UTM policy, so unmanned aircraft system traffic management. So, suppose thousands of drones are flying, how you will know what to do? Or you will uh, do collisions with others, like we have a traffic system for roads, our vehicles, traffic signal is there, traffic police is there. So, similarly, there is a traffic management policy where all drones will be even now also for aircraft traffic management policy is there, you know. So, all the aircrafts, they are always connected with the any of the ATC of the airport. So, if a aircraft if flows from Guwahati, you are going to Delhi. So, throughout the route, it will be connected to some or the other airport. So, that those people will know the location of this aircraft this aircraft will know the location of nearby aircraft and there are certain rules. So, there should be some say 500 meter or uh, 1, 2 kilometer separation between the aircraft sideways or bottom end up. So, sometimes you have seen news na, two aircrafts uh, they just escape the collision because of this uh, airport instructions. So, these people used to tell one aircraft is coming to your direction, you go 500 meter up. So, immediately that person will go up and other one will cross from the bottom. So, all these traffic management is already there for aircraft, similar is being adopted for drone also. So, each drone flying will be having its location, it is given going to control station. So, suppose I am monitoring of for this air space or for this room. So, any drone flying in this room should give its location to me. Then I can instruct any drone to follow or go up or down or do not move in this direction like that. Next is the provision for research and development. So, sufficient uh, relaxations are given for school uh, like college, universities or research organizations to do many research and development thing. They have also kept one provision for model remotely pilot aircraft system and autonomous UAVs. So, model means it is for R and D purpose, all these IITs and academic institutes or R and D institute, they can develop a different model for a specific purpose and that, that can be, there are certain relaxations for that. So, within their campus, they can fly without any permission like there and then some journal guidelines are there. So, generic classification if you see they are into these uh, types like nano. So, based on weight they have classified not based on the type. So, initially I have shown you based on the type, copter type, fixed wing type, hybrid type, but here it is classified again based on the weight. So, anything less than 250 grams it is called as nano UAV. 250 to 2 kg is the micro and 2 kg to 25 kg is the small. So, most of the drones you are operating falls under a small category hardly 4 to 5 kg like that. Then you have medium category more than 25 kg and less than 150 and large. So, within this also uh, just one important point I want to highlight you, even if you are having a nano drone suppose, for a nano drone you do not require any pilot license or any operator license, anybody can take it and fly from the market. But the limitations here is, your nano drone should not cross a speed of 15 meter per second or it should not uh, go beyond a height of 15 meter and range of 100 meters. If you are breaching this limitation, it will again go to the small ca micro category. 
So, it will be considered if you are flying a nano drone more than 15 meter per second, it is counted in next category that is micro category. So, regulations required for micro has to be followed then. So, micro you require a pilot license, then if you do not have pilot license you are caught. So, there are certain provisions for under uh, this CRPC also now police can take action against people, those who are not flying legally. So, these things you have to be aware as a pilot or as a person when you are operating as a office also. So, uh, these are the certain limitations for each and every class, if you do not follow that your drone will be counted in next class. So, uh, the more higher class you go you need to have more permissions and all. So, micro UAV say height and speed up to 60 meter and 25 meter per second like that it was limited, A small and medium. So, so, no UAVs and fly in prohibited areas. So, and these are cert some general requirements what I was saying. So, say if you are operating nano drones you do not need anything, but the moment you go for micro or mini uh, small and above you have to have security clearance, you need unique identification number it is similar to a uh, car your car registration number. Then you need a operator permit, then remote pilot approval, then UAOP is required, so many things are required. First and last you see nano and model aircraft also you do not need anything, model aircraft for R and D purpose. And then you required some mandatory equipments based on the category of, of which your drone belongs. So, you need a ID plate, so, so fire resistant ID plate like or your uh, vehicle number plate. One RFID or SIM monitoring is required for bigger drones, return to home facility has to be there. So, you are saying now if it goes beyond your line of sight or it flies away, so suppose radio communication is cut off, then this RTS feature is there. So, the moment communication loss, you can set the limit so in the software, you can say the communication more than 5 second or 10 second, if you, if you do not have any communication, it will come back to your pre-identified location or home location. So, these are certain safety features which are required now. Again anti collision lights, so those even aircrafts also night time you see some red light blinking or green light blinking. So, these lights are required to make others aware of your position, so others can also see you. So, these are some brief idea I am giving you, it is a big document and you need to read through that. And these are some no drone zone. So, this was the earlier concept, now you do not have to worry about all this. They have come up with a portal called Digital Sky. So, in Digital Sky, the map of entire country is given and they have divided it in different zones. So, red zone, green zone, yellow zone. So, based on that map, you can fly. In green zone, you can fly without any permission. Red zone are the restricted areas, so there you need to fly with certain permissions, maybe from deputy commissioner office or from or army or air force office, if you are flying nearby a cant area, army cant area or you are flying around near a border area, international border, then you need a separate kind of permissions. Then state capital secretariat complex or Vijay Chowk, Delhi that parliament area you cannot fly. So, all these restrictions are mentioned there. Then there are some more important things are mentioned, you cannot fly from a moving platform. So, suppose you are operating drone through a remote controller, you have to be stable and still on the ground, you cannot sit in a car and then car is also moving and you are trying to operate or you cannot sit in a ship and it, you are flying from there moving ship. So, all these restrictions are there 
then over eco sensitive zones or around national parks wildlife sanctuaries so these places you cannot fly until you have proper permission from moef or concerned forest offices then there are some permanent and temporary prohibited area restricted area danger area so all these things now they have mapped into the digital sky portal so if you open that in map you will see red areas green areas so accordingly you need to be aware and you need have to be very careful so now uh, this ministry of home affairs they have given permission to cisf and police and all if any unauthorized drone is caught into a prohibited area they can shoot it down uh, suppose you are flying nearby a airport or a sensitive area where you are not supposed to it, they will shoot it down and even police can uh, take you and uh, many actions can be taken unless you have proper permission so these are some of the topics we discussed for today so i thank all of you for listening carefully if you have some more points we can discuss for next 5 10 minutes before handing over to other person If you have any query, you can ask. Yes. Can you pass? Can you go back to the type of behavior and the second day can affect you? It is first slide. Yes. Yeah. You can we speak in mic so everybody can listen, na? This mic. Sir, I just want to ask about the advantage and disadvantage of this different type of UAV, sir. Okay, so you want to repeat it once. So if you see the fixed wing kind of UAV, first left image. So you can see we require a kind of runway, like all commercial planes. So you have to have a 200 or 300 meter proper runway field where it can take off and land. That is one limitation. Second limitation is it cannot remain stationary at one place. So you have seen all aircrafts, even if landing clearance is not there in airport, it used to keep circling on that. It cannot remain stationary at one place. So these two are limitations compared to copter and advantage is it can carry very high payload. So 20, 30, 50 kg, 100 kg also you can gen make a system to carry and it can carry very large area in one go, 5, 10 square kilometer also it can cover for mapping or it can go 50, 60 kilometer uh, distance also and it is it does not require very much power so it is less power hungry and one more important thing is it requires very high skilled pilot so flying a fixed wing is very very difficult compared to flying a copter because you have to be always attentive because, because your aircraft is not stationary it is always in motion so when you come to copter, it, it can hover at one place, you can leave all the controls, you can keep remote controller aside, it will remain stationary in this place until battery is there. So this is advantage is ease of flying. Another advantage is they are small in size and they can be kept in a backpack and you can move around, very lightweight. Then, uh, this kind of copters very suitable for a small area study. You need not to have a runway or a big ground to take off and land. Maybe a 2 by 2 meters area is sufficient to take off and land for this kind of copters. So these are some of the advantages for this copter. 
limitation is uh, you do not have much flight time say 2, 3 hours flight time is limited by few 20 to 40, 50 minutes. Payload also limited 500 to uh, grams to uh, 2, 3 kgs. If you put more payload your float flight time will come down. So, if you put 10 kg in a copter it will fly for 5, 10 minutes. So, those trade offs are there. So, to overcome or to uh, like put a balance on both of them this hybrid configuration has come up. So, now you do not require a run runway maybe through a 4 by 4 meter place you can take off and land and you can fly like a fixed wing after transition uh, we call it a transition and retransition. So, it take offs like a copter it goes into transition and flies like a fixed wing and during retransition it will come back and land like a copter. So, this is what for hybrid. But the uh, uh, disadvantage is cost part increases for hybrid thing. Yeah. Anyone else? So, anything else you would like to discuss? ठीक है तो सब लोग सब समझ गया नहीं सब समझ गया है तो प्रॉब्लम नहीं है थोड़ी देर के बाद पूछूंगा नैनो कैटेगरी व्हाट इज नैनो कैटेगरी यू हैव एक्सप्लेन इन द प्रेजेंटेशन See in DGCA guideline first slide I have seen shown na, based on weight drones are categorized nano, micro, small. So, nano me kitna weight ke tak hota hai? 250 grams. Okay then, thank you all. If you have any queries, you can tell to him later on also, no problem. So, you can, uh, we can wind up for now. No, it will be, you can see I think, no, if you come to some time our office I can show you we have, so 250 grams also it this much is small it will look, but similar configuration 4 arms, 4 motors, copter kind of thing. Doctor. Oct, octocopter. Ten wings. Ten wings you can say dekha, but till now mostly the used configuration is a quadcopter and hexcopter plus octocopter with four arms. Yeah. So, octocopter also can be eight arms and can be four arms also you can put two motors one top one down. So, beyond that we do not go because of certain limitations. So, suppose it is good you have asked now, suppose you want to go for 8, 10, 12 or 15 arms, problem is the bigger size you go your weight will increase, you know, you need more power to drive. So, other if you need more power means you need bigger batteries. So, this 10,000 mAh battery itself it is around 1.5 to 2 kg that battery weight. If you go bigger battery, bigger battery, then your if you put more weight with same battery, your flight time will come down. So, there are certain trade offs and then efficiency of your motors and all. So, 
theoretically you can go for octa, deca, 12 arms, 15 arms, but practically there are certain limitations. So, you will not see beyond hexa in general until it is made for a very specific purpose. So, most of the general purpose remote sensing systems or even for this is spraying or disaster management maximum hexacopter you will see or quadcopter for a small systems or quadcopter with 8 motors. So, here one down will come to 4 plus 2 4 plus 4 8 will become. So, this configuration also gives you heavy payload. So, you can put more payload on there. Yeah, no, it can be used for this uh, entertainment purpose or your this uh, movie capturing or marriage ceremonies. So, you need not to fly high, no, you can very small area you can fly and see. Okay. So, she has listened with some interest, it seems. Good. Okay, anything else? Got time over here. Bula, but that may not be clear. Okay, then you can break for next lecture. Uh, thank you very much Chirag sir for the wonderful session. Uh, we will now break for the uh, tea break and uh, after 15 minutes we will come for the session 2 uh, that will be taken by uh, Sri Vipinji. Uh, thank you all, thank you again uh, sir for this session.
चेक 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 Hi, hi everyone. Chalo, uh, I think let's make this in session very much interactive. Or uh, I think uh, Chirag sir has already covered everything here. So I have like few inputs uh, which I can convey, and then we can have the session interactive. Uh, first of all, uh, I will just quickly run through few of the things which were left in from previous session. So basically, when we are speaking of drones, right? So now you are well aware what are the components and all, but how are they uh, uh, interacting with with each other? So basically, if you can see, uh, this is the basic framework. So apart from the drone, just forget everything, the structure, quadcopter, and everything. So basically, this is the normal internal structure inside that. Uh, frame or something you can call it, right? So starting from you, you can understand the flow. It's the very general flow according to the uh, function of each and every component. So starting from the power, right? So first we need to connect the batteries, right? So understand from this point, once the battery connected to the system, the power will flow to two basic things. One, the autopilot which is the brain and then second the ESC, right? So these are the two core functions. So this is how it is flowing inside the entire uh, system. Now ESC as uh, Mr. Chirak has already uh, mentioned that ESC is responsible to spin the motors. And so basically there are two types of motors. Uh, one uh, which which are moving continuously, which cannot move the uh, like stop in between or like there will be only one uh, zero or one like whether it will move at some uh, predefined speed or uh, on the other side it will not um, spin, it will just simply stop. So uh, just because of this ESC, uh, the mo speed of the motors it can uh, be regulated like it can be around 10 meter per second or uh, like in terms of motor like you can say like uh, 100 spins per second or 200 spins per second based on the requirement. Then it circulates the current and it take, give the instructions to uh, the motor that at what speed they need to spin. So this is the uh, structure and on top of it if you can see these are the uh, propellers, right. So uh, motors then what motors will do it will spin the propeller and propeller will give the push, push to the drone that whether it need to lift up or if it is in air so it need to speed down, uh, uh, it, it will spin less and then uh, the entire copter or uh, quadcopter it, it will go down. Then uh, so this is the structure uh, for ESC and motors and propellers. Then coming to the next part, there will be few buzzers because there will be a beep in the inside the system. Like if there will be double beep, then it will have a certain meaning. It will have a triple beep, a single beep, a continuous beep. So every beep have 
uh, some uh, similar indications. So, similar to our notifications, notification which we receive uh, in our mobile. So, for uh, calling it will be a different uh, symbol, uh, different sound and for uh, messages there will be a different sound. So, uh, the buzzer will act like that only, it will have a various sounds. So, that we should know that now the system is activated, deactivated or it is uh, giving some errors or not. Then uh, another part is switch. So, basically if there will be uh, in certain systems, in not in every system, in not in this system, there will be a switch to arm or disarm the systems. Uh, then there will be the key component is GPS. So, uh, if you have given the command ki go at a, cert, uh, at a particular location, but how the system will identify that location is same or not. So, there will be a GPS inside the system which will locate that this is the particular lat, long and altitude which it need to maintain. So, this is uh, the all these things will be uh, taken care by the GPS module. Now, this uh, now, see, now you have understood the entire thing, the how it is circulating, but how it is communicating to the ground, right. So, there are two ways to communicate to the ground. One uh, is through uh, the radio the controller, which uh, Chirag sir has also shown to you, uh, the controller. So, controller to, uh, from where you need to uh, control it, like left, right, up, down. So, this will all through a different channel. And then there will be a separate set of uh, uh, trans receiver, you can say. So, why we are calling this trans receiver? Because it can transmit the signal as well as receive uh, from the ground. So, this telemetry will communicate to the ground, so that it can show that where is the position of the uh, uh, drone, how far it is, at what speed it is, uh, how much battery has left in the system. So, entire activity is through telemetry. So, now uh, you can see that there are uh, the key components are uh, batteries, motors, propeller, ESC, uh, like buzzer, switch, uh, this uh, radio communication module and telemetry, right. And key, key component is autopilot and the entire programming is inside this brain only. So, uh, this is clear anything from this slide? Anything you want to understand in the flow like how it is circulating? Or if you have any query you can ask there only or later if you want. So, uh, so basic functionality of any drone like any drone uh, whether you call it fixed wing, multi rotor or anything, there will be three key principles. Role, yaw and throttle, these are the three uh, key principles. So, basically what is role? So, uh, suppose uh, this is your drone. So, uh, this is front, this is back, left, right. So, uh, the right and left, so this is role. You have to consider uh, the center of the gravity here and then you can consider it like right, left. So, this is roll. Now, the second one is uh, pitch. So, pitch is like front and back. So, this is the pitch and uh, then the third motion is yaw, like on the same axis, but it will rotate on the same line. So, that is yaw. So, these are the three key principles and then throttle. Throttle is simple like the more the throttle, uh, the system will go up, less the throttle system will go down. So, these are the three key pr principles, roll, uh, yaw, pitch and throttle. So, uh, this name is uh, like a synonym of pitch only. So, you can consider it pitch. So, these are the three principles. Yaw is ad uh, additional. Throttle we consider only in uh, multi rotors. For fixed wings, it is a different concept, but we are flying multi rotors here. So, we will go step by step. You can search for fixed wings principles later, but these are the uh, key principles. So, roll, yaw, throttle and pitch or you can say Nick. Any doubt? 
so in terms of multi rotor you, we can also see on the field like how it is uh, rolling pitching yawing or how we are uh, providing the throttle inputs right so uh, these are the very important uh, principles to fly a drone we we have to consider uh, while giving some instructions like it will go left or right or front or back so these uh, four principles are required uh, especially raw pitch and yaw yaw so uh, when we are saying that uh, it will pitch yaw or roll so how it will be done so i can just quickly bring the drone so uh, see first thing is uh, throttle control so green is like uh, less uh, red is like if you are giving the command more so when we uh, we are giving like less throttle command so it will go down more throttle command so it will move up so all green like all the motors are green like it uh, in a similar uh, speed it will so like it will if it is uh, moving like uh, rpm of 5 rpm then all will revolve in 5 rpm only if you are giving uh, move up so you have to give throttle up like full uh, speed then it will go up now the pitch control pitch so what is pitch here if this is this is front this is back so it will pitch like this front and back so for for pitch so how now uh, how will the motor will spin in case of uh, roll uh, this pitch so for see sim for simple thing you can consider uh, if you i want to uh, pitch in front like this for for this thing you the back motors these two need to spin at a faster rate and the, uh, the front one at a lower rate right then only it can pitch low if i want it to go back and pitch uh, on the backer side so these two motors will spin faster and the back one will spin lower similar to roll only so when we are rolling on left so these two motors will spin high these two uh, motors will spin low similar for the right thing these high these two uh, slow then yaw so basically what is yaw so now uh, these are four motors right or how these four motors works they all four four motors are not revolving in the same direction these two will uh, if these two are moving at a clockwise direction then these two will move at anti clockwise right if these motors are uh, revolving in like clockwise then this is anti clockwise right so these are like cross directional uh this is like uh, from uh, aerodynamics background but you don't need to go deep down into that but yes uh, this is how the basic multi rotor works now see uh, then if we if i will say yaw then uh, the cross things like they should uh, these two need to be uh, increase these motors will increase the speed so left if i want to uh, in move your need to move left then these two motor will spin high and right this uh, diagonal will move slow then it will move left then similar to ro uh, rotate right your then left one will move uh, high and right one uh, this diagonal one will move slow so this is how the basic principle of moving uh, the multi rotors uh, in air you will see while uh, flying this as well now uh, you are able to understand now uh, how the spinning and all works okay okay so before uh, moving it to the next slide uh, let's discuss few of the things uh, so as per the previous session so now you understand what is drone how it is applicable to other industries uh, what are the applications 
So, one basic question which I want to ask here is that why drones, why drone is required, why not the other technologies like uh, we can collect the photographs from ground as well, right, but why only drones? What will be the benefit of uh, drones in comparison to the other uh, traditional ways? No, no, uh, like yeah, aircraft is one of the thing, but uh, like if I am sending uh, one person in the field, he can also collect the details and prepare the report, but why drones then? Yeah, so uh, the one thing is like large uh, area collection, large area capturing in less amount of time and uh, the very high resolution data and it's second, so this comes the aerial photography that comes under remote sensing, right. So, remote sensing is what like which we can sense from a remote location. So, in that uh, there will be satellite data, there will be drone data or any other aircraft data. So, uh, this is why uh, drone, so drone has another advantages over satellite and other things. So, uh, let me just quickly, uh, okay. So, basically, uh, so when you are comparing your satellite data with drone data, so suppose, uh, this, uh, how, so basically what happens, like how, what is the basic uh, drone photogrammetry looks like? So, entire uh, drone uh, industry is divided into few segments only, majority is photogrammetry, uh, video surveillance and other sectors, right. So, one, uh, one key uh, sector is, uh, you can say mapping, then there will be surveillance, then there will be other sectors which are minor. Uh, so, it will be spraying, uh, then uh, what you call uh, package delivery. Right, uh, then uh, the other the fire extinguishing and other uh, fields, but for your subject like geography, remote sensing and all. So, these two uh, areas are very much important. So, mapping and surveillance. So, surveillance it is very basic like you need to collect the video uh, uh, evidences and prepare the report accordingly. Right. So, in uh, video surveillance, a few of the applications are like uh, tower inspections. So, you need to collect the video, you have to check the defects and prepare the report accordingly that this nut bolt is defective, there is rusting or something like that, right. So, these are the uh, few uh, applications of uh, surveillance. One of the major surveillance uh, application is defense, where you need to see the security and all. Then there will be oil and gas plants where you need to see the damages in the entire plant or security. So, these are the surveillance. So, surveillance is very much basic. Now, uh, the key uh, parameter is mapping, right. So, mapping is one where your expertise will be utilized. So, in mapping, so So, see mapping now the traditional ways. So, going back to the traditional ways, uh, what we used to do in our previous uh, like you can say going back to 20 to 30 years back, they were collecting data via satellite first or from the ground uh, data collection like going and cl clicking photographs or uh, manually writing the reports or something like that and uh, giving it to the government. Uh, so, I will go one by one. So, first the satellite data. So, there are various applications where you need to uh, see the precise data. S suppose in agriculture 
or uh, the city mapping or something like that. So, in satellite we have a resolution of uh, around 10 meter the minimum which is freely available. So, 10 meter so suppose this is the 10 meter resolution. So, in that there will be uh, in an entire area there will be like small small houses. or uh, uh, farm you can say crop fields etcetera. So, now see this is the entire uh, city or crop field like various crops are sown here. So, now the satellite data what it will cover is in a single tile the resolution is very low. So, this tile will cover a single image of this right in which four houses will be covered, but in that same pixel in that same pixel you cannot identify or you cannot dis distinguish that how many houses are there in between like details will be missing right. So, for those details uh, drone so the advantage of drone is the resolution is very high like the single photographs will be this small right. So, uh, this is so when you will uh, process the data then the resolution which you will get is very very high and you can see the details you can count the number of trees uh, number of plants you can see a number of uh, buildings etcetera but in terms of the satellite data the, these details will be missing so that is the key difference between uav and uh, the other satellite data available now, coming to the other part which is uh, ground data collection. So, earlier they uh, what they used to do it uh, some person will go in the field suppose uh, for uh, this crop health monitoring where uh, under uh, uh, Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana someone uh, says that uh, yeah uh, that farmer is claiming that this field is uh, is under loss. So, they will assign it to some uh, person, he will locally go there and uh, prepare the report, but how to identify that that, uh, that report is transparent or not, whether the de details are right or not, because that is again there will be a question on this key, maybe he has taken money from the farmer to settle the claim accordingly. So, in that case. Uh, uh, UAV data or these uh, high precision data multispectral RGB data using drones it is very much helpful because they will give the precise data and the entire field also like uh, if the field uh, each field they, it can co it capture it uh, the light long uh, light long altitude everything it will capture and area the precise area it can calculate that the damage is under uh, 1 square meter or 5 square meter square meter. So, there will be a transparency in the uh, in the data. So, that is why UAV uh, data is important and and the most important uh, parameter is like most important advantage is you name any sector uh, drone data has a application a use case in each and every industry. You name it like oil and gas, agriculture, defense, uh, highway monitoring, city planning everywhere you will find the application of drones. So, that is why uh, it is very much helpful. So, basically for you guys it is important to understand that how uh, the images are getting triggered and uh, how it is converting into the meaningful data sets right. So, I think uh, you have today uh, got to know most of the technical uh, things like uh, uh, the drone uh, components how it is working, but the thing is now the next question is that uh, how this data is collected and how it is converting into maps. So, anyone have any idea that how the data is converting into maps, what is the back end processing. So, basically the similar so, whenever we are clicking photographs from our mobile. So, it will uh, click the same photographs. So, from air from it will click the similar photographs with certain uh, side lap and overlap. So, front overlap 
like front overlap is this, side side overlap is this. In our software, we will plan that two photographs which we are taking, so it should uh, have some overlap in between, like 30, 30, uh, 30 side lap, 40 front lap, uh, similar to that, right. So, uh, how uh, if I want to uh, collect the data of an area, so this white sheet you can consider a, a area of a 1 square kilometer, 2 square kilometer. So, I will uh, collect, I will plan my missions like this. My drone will move in this fashion and scan the entire area, right. In this entire area, uh, it will start triggering from the uh, starting of the location, first photograph it will click here, then there will be a front lap, whatever it will be like 60 percent, 70 percent, it will start uh, uh, triggering the photographs in a certain uh, distance, maybe 10 meter, 20 meter according to the programming then it will turn and again click the photographs and see when it is turning around then there will be a side overlap between two lines. It will again follow the same route, but there will be a certain overlap with the previous photos triggered. Now it is having both, this is the front overlap, this is the side overlap, right. So, uh, both uh, overlaps it is considering and similar to that it will cover the entire area. Right. This will have a overlap here. So, it will start triggering all over its uh, way in the entire route. So, up uh, you can see that this blue polygons, the, the blue photographs, now it will, uh, it will have certain lat longs. Each photograph will have a time stamping or a location stamping. So, all these photographs will be given to the uh, uh, processing software and this will be converted into a bigger map. So, this blue one, it will stitch, each and every image will be stitched and uh, so, stitching and converting into uh, the various outputs like it will be 2D, 3D, uh, there will be a DS, DSM, digital surface model, digital terrain model. So, all, all these uh, outputs can be extracted out of it based on the side lap, overlap and front lap. So, it will be a like in this one hour session, it cannot be covered entire thing, but this is the general methodology from where we generate the maps and uh, convert it into a meaningful data sets. So, the basic process is to generate the map and then uh, analyzing it that what we need to extract, whether the farms, cities, we need to ex uh, find the number of trees to count or anything else. So, all these things can be extracted through this mission planning. So, uh, so, how do we do it? So, once you have the drone, now uh, you want to, uh, you got a target that you need to cover 5 square kilometer of area and uh, this is the side lap, overlap and everything and uh, you take one drone, you take one pilot, co-pilot co with you, uh, maybe you have to uh, do the DGPS survey as well. So, what will be the first step? So, first step will be the site inspection. So, site inspection, in site inspection what will uh, you do that you go see how is the terrain, whether it is hilly, plain area or uh, there are obstacles in between, maybe towers or something like that. Then uh, and uh, also as per the regulation you need to check whether it is falling under red zone, green zone or yellow zone. If it is under green zone, you are good to go, you can fly. Uh, if uh, you are 
the area is falling under yellow zone or red zone, then you have to uh, submit the papers to the concerned authorities and uh, take the approval accordingly. Then uh, you have to define the parameters. Then uh, these parameters like uh, according to the scope, if you want to generate the 2D data sets, then uh, what overlap, side lab you need to uh, take the entire mission planning will be there. Then uh, DGPS survey uh, is the other step. So, DGPS is required that is not the part of the UAV process, it is an additional uh, survey we used to do along with uh, UAV surveys to uh, increase the accuracies. When a client is saying that he need a very high, high accurate data less than 5 centimeter or 2 centimeter data, then there is an additional uh, technology which is DGPS survey. I think there will be a separate uh, session for this. So, we will not go deep into this, but uh, this is also important for uh, your subject. Then uh, coming to the next thing, then we will uh, uh, plan the entire area and execute the uh, drone operation. It, it uh, The things which we need to collect from the drones is raw data, the raw images, the lat long, the log files uh, to uh, process this and the, all this data will again go to, uh, uh, to the another set of team which is the GIS team or processing team. This, uh, this team will uh, uh, collect all these data sets and process it into uh, a bigger map like 2D map, 3D map or any, any requirement from the client. And these data sets will be converted into like uh, these ortho mosaics. Ortho mosaic is a simply 2D maps, which will have a certain resolution. It may be 5 centimeter, 10 centimeter based on the high altitude. Uh, higher the altitude, lower will be the uh, resolution. Like suppose if I am flying at 200 meter, then maybe uh, the resolution will be 2 centimeter. If I am flying at 100 meter, then the images captured resolution it could be uh, 10 centimeter. If I am flying more like 500 meter or something, then accordingly uh, resolution will be high 50 centimeter. So, this is the calculation we used to do for uh, our uh, you can say mission planning. Then uh, so, according to that we, we generate the uh, required maps for the client. Okay, uh, so now this is the technical thing which I have already uh, conveyed like this is the entire flow would look like once you will develop the drone, de developing the drone into next phase, uh, keeping the sensor on it, choosing choose the sensor properly, uh, then uh, choosing the sensor, uh, then you will plan your mission, planning the mission, then you have to execute the mission on ground. then. Uh, you have to collect the raw data, raw data will go to GIS team, GIS team will uh, process it and convert it into the analysis. So, uh, this is the entire flow for uh, every uh, GIS mapping applications. Okay, so, the next thing is, uh, so there will be a question in your mind that uh, once you will learn all this technology, hardware, software or whatever is your interest mapping and everything. Now, what is your career option in this, right? So, now your expert is in uh, flying the drone, you, you are expert is in processing data. So, go, moving further, uh, how is the scope for your job opportunities in market, in a government or in private or something like that? Uh, like mostly private players are there who are operating it. They are very limited uh, government agencies which are doing the operations by themselves like Nectar has taken the initiative to uh, do the operations by themselves. Then uh, so similar to our company like Asteria, there are various companies who are taking uh, people to get on board in this operation. So, there are various opportunities. First opportunity is the R and D engineers. So, what is the role of an R&D engineer? So, these people will uh, 
will test the systems according to the uh, need in the market. If someone says that uh, he need a drone which can fly up to 2 hours or 3 hours or 5 hours, so all, all these research and development programs, so all these engineers are, uh, are responsible to do this uh, testing in house. Then there will be a design engineers. So once the, uh, there will be a certain design or like how motors will be placed, what will be the length of the arms, uh, size of the multi-rotor, uh, fixed wing or any, any uh, drone. So designing will be another part of it. So design engineers are there. Then there will be software engineers to operate, to, uh, gen, uh, to operate these drones. There will be a certain uh, softwares installed in these uh, hardwares. So those softwares will build by these software engineers. Then th uh, these uh, software engineers will play a, a key role in the entire organization. Then there will be a test pilots in the organizations. That uh, once the systems are ready, so who will test these drones? So there will be a test pilots. So even in our company also we have uh, lots of uh, test pilots. Uh, so even there are various girls as well various female candidates who has uh, uh, opted this career opportunity to test the drones on field and they are we have a designated field uh, uh, in Bangalore location where they go take the drone and test it and prepare a report that uh, whether the drones have any issues whether it is qualifying it or if not then submit the reports to the R&D team. Then again uh, operation pi pilots will be there. So for operational pilots, uh, once the drone is successful, it is in production, uh, then you need to map the area. So for that thing, there is a requirement of operational pilots. So these operational pilots are, uh, uh, their responsibility is to take the drone, collect as per the instruction, as per the requirement, collect the data and submit it to GIS team, right. Then uh, there will be another career opportunity of GIS engineers. So their responsibility is to convert these raw data images into maps, whichever is collected from drone data through various processing softwares and do the analysis. Whether uh, So once they receive the raw data, so their uh, responsibility is to convert into maps first. Uh, do the analysis. Analysis mean uh, first if a, a client is asking that uh, give me the precise field area or area calculations of entire area. So that uh, these uh, GIS engineers are responsible for that. If they want, uh, if there is a requirement of annotating the entire area to, to uh, annotate the building, uh, trees, farms, so they will do it. If there is a requirement of uh, uh, calculate the loss in fields, so loss, the uh, loss estimation will be there. So similar to that, there will be various application where GIS team will work, right. So these are the uh, operational uh, career opportunities. Now coming to the other, another uh, career opportunity that is in sales team, like now the, uh, there is a requirement in market to uh, onboard the people who have experience on this mapping so that they can convey the same to the clients that we are capable of doing these these activities and these are uh, these are doable or not doable so they are uh, pre-sales people are required pre-sales uh, who are making the solution for the clients like in in maybe suppose forestry what we can do in agriculture what is the possibilities uh, in defense what is the uh, possibilities so these uh, the role of these uh, pre sales guys is to make the solution for upcoming clients or maybe any other opportunities in market then there will be sales team in market so uh, the experienced people can uh, go to the customers and convince them that this is what we can do and for this activity, the person should be from that similar background or maybe he, uh, he should understand that this technology can give a business value to a customer, right. 
we cannot go and simply say to uh, any any farmer that yes i will go uh, map your field and take some money from you we need to convince him that yes we will map it to map your entire field and give the analysis to you which can benefit uh, you in settling the claims or maybe uh, calculating the health of your crops w uh, and uh, once we submit the report to you you can take the actions accordingly you can, maybe you need to put more pesticide less pesticide uh, more spring need to be done so those prescription we, we can submit so similar to that there will be multiple clients to whom we can convince that this should be the practice so these are the career opportunities going forward which you can pursue in your uh, uh, career days right so uh, these are the uh, things which you can approach once you get the experience in uh, in this industry now uh, so what is the future of drones here so since this uh, industry is very new and government is pushing uh, people to uh, work in this area so there is like lots of lots of opportunities floating in market it is going to scale up only so going back to the days like from where we have started like i was like uh, i was a part of nectar only uh, i nectar was my first organization so i started from where only so from that point where there was no uh, uh, regulations uh, even the drones were banned then uh, we used to fly we uh, they were uh, highway we we were the first people who flown for highways we were the first people to flown for agriculture so from that point uh, till now uh, government is pushing and giving the mandates to various industries that you have to use there is no other option to uh, for this technology no replacement you have to use the drones technology only uh, in your sectors like few of the sectors are agriculture where it is it is mandatory to use there are land mapping property card mapping uh, making activities swamitva which mr chirag has also conveyed so uh, in those activities it is mandatory so requirement is huge so once you will uh, understand the technology how it is working what we can do what is the current progress so then uh, understanding technology how the image processing is working uh, how, what are the deliverables how it is beneficial to the clients then it will be a huge opportunities in the market uh, right so now coming to uh, the our company uh, so i will quickly brief about our company that what uh, is our company doing so that you can have an idea that similar to our company maybe other companies will be having those kind of uh, uh similar approaches so asteria aerospace limited it's a company who was which was founded in 2012 and uh they started manufacturing uh drones for defense initially then they started for manufacturing for civil applications like land mapping uh and all these things then uh, they have started uh manufacture uh, doing the operations in house Uh, processing the data and uh, now uh, asteria is uh, doing the analytics and visualization all under one roof so i will uh, uh, show that in upcoming slides so basically whatever can be done using drones it is uh, it can be possible through asteria aerospace and uh, so asteria was acquired by uh, reliance industries in 2019 so asteria is a reliance subsidiary company so you can say that it's, it's a reliance company only so how uh, big it is like we have uh, more than 300 people in house where 90 plus people are working in r&d to make the new systems according to new technologies uh, there are various clients like government clients uh, private clients agriculture clients uh, highway clients oil and gases so various clients we have uh, manufacturing is going on in bangalore currently and the other offices are in gurgaon jammu mumbai and all these areas 
support offices, customers, support, because once we uh, manufacture the drones, we need to uh, have a customer support or sales office as well. Uh, so, once maybe if I will sell it to someone, there will be some issues. So, there should be a local offices. So, similar to that, uh, there is huh, so there is a, another career opportunities in sales and support offices where uh, people can uh, talk to the clients, understand their issues with the systems which already sold to them and uh, they can directly communicate and help them to solve their problems. So, that is the another career opportunities. Now, the applications where we are working. So, one of the important sector is defense. So, in defense, uh, we are selling our drones to Indian Army, BSF, CRPF. So, there is a huge opportunities in defense because defense is very much active region government is focusing. Then uh, another section is oil and gas. So, I just I think initially I told you that uh, in oil and gas, if I need to see the chimneys, what are the condition of these chimneys. So, I can collect the raw footage and videos of all the uh, chimneys of a single plant and give submit the report accordingly like uh, this requires maintenance or not. Then there will be telecom sector. So, in telecom what we are doing is we are uh, mapping the entire tower and making the 3D tower out of it and uh, automatically using artificial intelligence reports are being prepared without any manual intervention that uh, what is the condition of each and every parts because it is very much important for this tower owning companies to know the condition of these uh, these antennas omni antennas directional antennas uh, so and the cost is very high to send someone and he will uh, inspect the reports and it, and that is again that is not an transparent thing because there will be a human error because at what level he can uh, climb and uh, check the status but with uh, drone technology it can be uh, we can have a visual uh, evidences and we can submit the report accordingly using artificial intelligence so that's where the technology is going now it from manual to uh, completely artificial intelligence so, agriculture, I think agriculture is very much uh, uh, clear to you, like it is all monitoring the crops, identifying them uh, to check their conditions, whether there is uh, disease or not, uh, or there is a stress, there is a loss. So, I think the most important thing which you can study about is that uh, what census is required for uh, crop health monitoring, yield estimation. Uh, uh, or maybe crop health mon or this growth monitoring and all. So, you can take a note of it and um, you can search online, there will be a huge uh, document, uh, a separate document for this using various uh, sets of uh, sensors. Because in this uh, sector, we, you, we use RGB, we use multispectral, we use hyperspectral we use a lidar so there there are multiple multiple uh, opportunities in gis gis is another a big, bigger sector gis is not only uh, related to uh, construction monitoring or highway monitoring everything comes under gis like a road mining uh, highways everything will be there so you you can uh, see the pr progress like before suppose one example is there if you if i want to uh, construct a road first i want to see the what is the condition how much uh, construction is required length area calculation so for that thing like pre construction thing we can monitor using drone so once the construction starts then there should there will be a periodic uh, monitoring after maybe monthly monitor, monitoring can be done uh, then once the uh, road is constructed then post construction like what is the condition of that um, road uh, like after one month two month is there any damage any potholes so that can be monitored so similar to that uh, solar industry is another evolving sector where you can focus and study about 
that uh, in solar what uh, generally we used to do uh, we uh, before installing the solar panel there will be a an empty land but you have to see that what is the condition here uh, uh, whether it is like lying down it is uh, elevated highly elevated or low low elevated so that reports goes to the solar companies and they according to that they used to install the solar panel right so once the solar panel is installed then there is a requirement of checking the solar cells like you, you can see like they will there are like this much smaller solar cells we, we need to see the condition of those whether it is damaged or not right so for that thing uh, again we used to uh, deploy the drones drones with thermal sensors so those thermal sensors they check in uh, in this field that the temperature of uh, of this entire solar panels are constant or not so once there will be a uh, damage in the solar cell there will be a low temperature in that so for, uh, according to that we can see and we can identify and prepare the reports that uh, the in this particular area there is a problem go and replace it but this will reduce a lot of cost uh, in less amount of time we can survey the large number of area so this is the benefit of uh, sol uh, drones in solar industries as well uh, these are the three basic sets of drones we have so one which you have already seen uh, this is the a200 series so why we call it a200 series the particular drone which you have seen that is a200 geo because that is only meant for uh, the mapping using high resolution rgb data if i want to survey uh, we can say the agriculture land with multispectral data i just need to replace this right uh, this uh, sensor will be replaced with multispectral hyperspectral to map the area the, and it falls under micro category so micro category you know under uh, 2 kg so this is falling under 2 kg and uh, this is the micro so the only benefit of uh, micro in according to the new rules is like in green zone you don't need to take permission for micro drone you can take your drone and fly anywhere in green zone so that is the best benefit but if i will talk about the small categories these two categories you cannot even fly in green zone without any permission because this is not this is restricted so coming to the next two series these are a400 series and 80 series so a400 is small because the the uh, entire all up weight is around 7 kg this is used for surveillance purpose in border areas oil and gas areas because this is very high resolution like 30 x camera will be there it can monitor any human being uh, maybe you can say 500 to 1 kilometer range it can see and track it that something is moving along the borders uh, maybe in a plant or something like gather uh, human gathering it can detect so uh, another application is uh, so another set of drone uh, 80 series so this is meant for more endurance so if you can see this is up to 4 kilometer range this is 8 kilometer range we have gone up to 15 kilometer as well with this and this is uh, more than 15 kilometer 15 to 20 kilometer so for more range more endurance like it can cover 120 minutes like two hours continuous surveillance and mapping can be done using this series so this is the advantage every segment has their advantage and disadvantages and this is the hybrid series it can uh, fly and take off like multi rotor and fly like a uh, fixed wing so i think you have only heard about the hardware and the processing softwares but uh, there is another career opportunities or you can say the learnings which the industry is moving toward is online a uh, gis platform so till now uh, the traditional thing is uh, there are like heavy costly gis uh, softwares available in market 
so people used to do these studies uh, or analysis on those platforms so this is the platform made by our company which can analyze over cloud only so it is a cloud platform so uh, this can plan your flights uh, it can monitor your flights all the data sets which you have captured captured from ground it can be uh, visualized in a single uh, screen so similar to uh, google you can uh, um, search it on any browser and put your credentials and see your data sets so this is the area where an entire uh, drone industry is moving like once you collect the data then there should be a cloud platform because it it will reduce the hard drives because the uh, drone data is very huge the and single data set single flight data set is minimum 2 to 5 gb of raw data then there will be a process data which will again 5 to 10 gb of again the process data so to re, uh, to replace that uh, the industry is moving toward this cloud solution so that entire data can be shifted to any uh, google uh, drives or uh, microsoft drives and the data can be saved safely there so see so these much of organizations are very much active in uh, drones uh, the local police departments survey of india uh, indian army then uh, even nectar as well nisec is the another example if i will talk about the uh, private agencies then uh, the clients which we are serving and which are very much active in this uh, solution is bajaj jio uh, platforms alliance tata mahindra bayer trident so the and various energy companies as well so there is a huge huge opportunities so i think uh, my slides are over yeah so i think from this point uh, you can raise your questions yes no no so there is a strategic move which we used to do so basically uh, if you will fly the drone so basically flying drone is a costly part so the areas which we are focusing is the drone it is to replace the traditional way so someone is going on the field and uh, doing the survey in 100 rupees we cannot say that we will give you best analysis and uh, will take 1000 rupees from you it will not make sense so for that thing uh, suppose there will be a crop of uh, sugar cane so there will be a strategic move that in uh, in the entire 12 months we will do the surveys uh, for first at the sowing stage in mid mid season and at the time of harvesting which is very much crucial we can do it in two stage as well so accordingly we have to do the strategic movements like exactly precisely as per the budget of the customer or farmer who is growing it so that solution is uh, required to be uh, customized no so uh, the problems so there is two ways to uh, capture it one when peop when uh, the customer is coming to us and telling us ki that uh, uh i am feeling that something is wrong with my farm and now you need to collect the data uh, please collect the data for us and submit the report so for that thing only one survey is required so we don't need to cover the entire season second way of doing is uh, we need to uh, ha so what solution we are providing to the customer is we are doing the surveys uh, using drones in mid intervals right uh, at the as i told you like at the time of sowing mid season and the harvesting season and the gaps in between we are filling through satellite data 
the weekly monitorings. Yeah, so this will reduce the cost and there will be a hybrid solution which can increase the accuracy as well as uh, uh, inc uh, uh, decrease the cost as well because we cannot ask the farmer to give 10,000, 20,000 for give, uh, monitoring the entire cycle for just of one farm. So, it should be around like uh, very small amount like 250 rupees or 300 rupees something and also the scale is required like uh, for a single farm if you will go and tell him that I, I will do the survey in 300 rupees it will be very very much uh, difficult to uh, bear that price for us because one person is going his salary his drone cost that will not justify the efforts. So, the area should be huge like two to three villages if you are mapping uh, together then it will make sense to uh, quote 250 rupees or 300 rupees per farm. So, this is how the costing is made. So, this is a very complex structure. So, you will come to know once you will work on this. Yeah. But yes, uh, this can be monitored uh, for 12 months. So, if the budget allows for customer, then the entire cycle can be monitored. Okay, uh, so uh, we will be seeing how a mission is planned before uh, flying the drone. Uh, in a software known as Mission Planner that is currently being used by Asteria Aerospace. And uh, we cannot fly our drones in nearby areas because it is a red zone. As you can, as you know that in the ground in front of us is a helipad, right? So, uh, if you go on to the DGCA website, it clearly, it, it gives you the uh, different digital sky, digital sky portal. Okay, so in digital sky portal, you can clearly see uh, if you are, whether you are in red zone or you are in yellow zone. So, we are in red zone to uh, get out of the red zone. We have decided to go to the uh, University of Science and Technology UASTM where our pilot will be flying up the drone and you will see how it goes up. But since in the ground it is uh, not possible to see clearly how the planning is done. Okay, so uh, we will demonstrate that part here only. So, you will be uh, seeing how the planning before planning pre flight checks all those things how it is done. We are not connecting the drone right now here because there might be accuracy errors as we are under the roof. But the planning part you will see.
Thank you. 